Hi there and welcome to a wet and windy Wednesday webinar. It's not easy to say. Um, today we're going to take a look at um, pedigree registrations and also just I was going to show you how we can do the CT, CTS reconciliation. So first of all, let's have a look at the pedigree reg. Thank you, Dick. Um, so if you go to the cow's head at the side and then go into links and then go into pedigree registrations and then registrations to send. Um, so we can see at the moment um, we've got one at the top there in blue, so that's all ready to go. Um, and then we've got some here at the bottom that are um, a little bit too late because we've got our maximum days as 49 days. Um, but do start using it if you haven't used it before. Um, first of all, you'll need to go into properties and then go into authentication. And then you'll need to pop in your herd prefix and your PIN number. So you'll only need to do this the once. Um, but once you've popped it in there, um, click OK and then put a tick in, say settings, and then click OK again. And this is the whole signs and judges, yeah? Yes, yep. So back, if I go back into properties, back into authentication, yep, you've got a separate one for Holstein and a separate one for Jersey. Right. And then you've also got them separated out on the two tabs there as well. Um, so if everything's in blue, um, that's all good to send. Um, and then it's just a case of going down to the bottom, clicking send, and then it will run through and then you'll get an automatic reply back. And it'll either say that it's been accepted um, or you will have it in red like these ones and then there will be a comment next to it. With the pay registrations, the most common reasons um, we get um, them sort of kicked back is that the sire is not found. Um, or there's an invalid name. So that's either where, um, when you've got your entry like this one, so we haven't got a, a name in for the calf, um, which you can do when you put the carving in and put the calf's details, you can put the name in at that point, or you can go back into the animal record. So use this one as an example. Um, and then you can go in to edit the animal, and then you can fill the name in here. And then once you've filled that in, click OK, and you'll need to refresh the registration list and then that name will come up and that animal will then be up in the blue section. If it's a sire not found issue, um, we will just use this top one as an example. So normally that is due to the sire breed not being in or his herd book not being in. So if we quickly have a look at the sire of this one. So if we go into Crimson and look at his information. So you can see here with this one we've got our breed. So he's a Holstein Friesian American. And then we've also got his herd book number in there. If you don't know what your the bull's um, herd book number should be, um, you can either look at this on um, Holstein UK. You can search for um, the bull's short name, um, and then that will give you his herd book number that you can copy and paste into here. The only thing to bear in mind with the herd book number, normally they have the breed code at the beginning. So this one would normally have a 65 at the beginning. You just need to make sure you take that breed code bit off before you pop it into the herd book number box, because otherwise it won't accept it. Okay, and we can, of course, import the bulls as well, can't we? Yep, so yep, you can import um, the breed and the AI code and everything from either the CIS import or the NMR bull import, um, which you can find the NMR one here, so you can do the bull search in here, and then that would find him. Um, or if you mit record with CIS, you can do the bull import from the link section and the CIS bit here, and then you've got your CIS web services, and you can import the bull that way. And just on that, that can I think that can save a lot of time. Yep. But also it means that if you if you put it in correctly, there's no problems then when you do the, the ped rage. So if anybody's got any questions on that, please call the help desk and we can we can take you through it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you are stuck on any of the errors that come up um or need a hand with sorting out the, the bull information or the herd book number, yep, just give us a call and we can we can help you sort that out. Okay. So the next one then was really to have a look at CTS and the reconciliation. Yep. Um, so if we just close these down. So for the reconciliation, um, so you want to go to the cow's head and then you want to go into your link section again and then you want to go to this one here, reconciliation. So before, what I should have mentioned, before we get to this point, you need to download a file from 
um, CTS. So when you log in online, um, on the left hand side, there is an uploads and downloads section. If you click onto that, and then if you scroll to the bottom of the page, there'll be three files um, that you can download at the bottom. The one you want to download is the top one, which is the all cattle on holding download. Um, and when you go to download it, it will download similar to this format. So it'll be CHD and then there'll be a load of numbers. Don't rename it, just download it as it is. Um, and then once you have got that file downloaded, you can come into the reconciliation, select it and open. And what it should do, which this doesn't do, because um, it's just, we haven't got proper ear tags in, so it can't search it properly. On the first column, you'll have all your matched animals. So these are all the ones that are in uniform and CTS and that everything's happy with. Um, and then you've got your next tab along. This is the animals that are in uniform, but not on CTS. So this will be any animals that have maybe left the farm in the past and we just we haven't updated their movement. And then what you might sometimes have is animals on CTS, but not in uniform. So this is why we've got animals on CTS, but we don't have in the uniform program. If you have any of these um, in here, it's just a case of on the uh, column where you've got a number, you can go through and assign a freeze brand to them. And then what that will do, it's down at the bottom here, it's, it's slightly greyed out so you can't see it too well. You've got a don't add animal button and you've got a send database button. Once you've got numbers in that number column, that send to database will then be highlighted. And then you can just click that button and then that'll import those animals in from this list into uniforms. So you haven't got to enter them in individually or anything like that. Okay, so it's not just comparing CTS and the uniform database that can actually help mm -hmm. bring, the, bring the data in. Yep, and then what you will also find, which unfortunately I can't show you on the matched ones, sometimes if you have any discrepancies between uh, dates of birth or purchase dates, you'll find in this section, you might have some dates that are highlighted in red if you hover over those dates, it will show you what's what with the date we have obviously in uniform and then what the date is in CTS. So then you can then go and edit those if need be and change them to the to the correct date. Okay, so the purpose really of today was just to make you aware of the functionality on the CTS rec and on pedigree registrations. So if you have any questions, um, you can type the questions in and we will we'll come back to you. Um, but yeah, just call the help desk and, and we can take you through it and hopefully that will give you some new functionality that maybe you haven't used before. Thank you very much for attending and we look forward to the next one in two weeks.